Welcome to the Crimson Sith channel. Today we are doing reviews for the Wave 12 and 13 of the X-Wing game. Um, today we're going to be looking at the new Imperial ship. It is the RH... Oh wait, no. It's the Alpha Class... I was reading one of the pilots. The Alpha Class Starwing. It's an EU ship, but I guess, I'm not sure, are all X-Wing ships canon now? I think they basically have been doing that. Uh, Disney likes continuity. So, uh, I believe now that this ship is going to be canon, canonized somehow. Because they tend to do that through the Rebel show or whatnot, whenever a new ship comes out in X-Wing. I ended up buying four of these packs, and I'll explain to you why here in a moment. It was a partial mistake. I thought I was buying three, but now I'm actually happy that I bought four. Anyway, I tried to place them in different uh, positions so you could see them, but it's kind of a pretty ship. It's based off the Lambda shuttle, so it looks similar. I'm going to get into the pilots here. Starting off is the new squadron pilot. I, irony there. Um, we have a two pilot skill. Stat line is two two four three. Nice and pretty. So he's a total hull and shields of seven, which is interesting. Point cost is eighteen. The action bar is interesting as well. Standard focus target lock. But then we got two actions that we haven't seen on an apparel ship yet. One of which we've never seen before in the game. We have the boost, which was a rebel and scum only action previously. And then the new one is the reload action. And what that allows you to do is take a, as an action, flip back over a card that you have that's an ordnance card. And the negative drawback is one, you're spinning action, two, you have to receive a weapons uh, a weapons failure. You know, the, the token, I can't remember the name of it, the token that says you can't fire that round. So it's an interesting action. Anything that allows me to get my ordinance back that I paid a lot of money for, I mean, I paid a lot of points for, uh, is good. Next up is the four pilot skill, coming in for 21 points. Forgot to mention the, the ship generically has just the torpedo and missile slot. This one has the addition of the EPT. Uh, same stat one though. No, no ability. Next up is Lieutenant Kasari. Kar Karsari? Karsabi? Uh, five, pilot, 5 pilot skill, 24 points, his ability, or he also has an EBT, his ability is when you receive a weapons disabled token, that's the name of it, if you are not stressed, you may receive one stress token to remove it, so that's kind of interesting, right off the bat, drawback removed. I think he's a pretty good pilot considering the fact that this thing can get that token two different ways, either by slamming or by uh, uh, reloading. So, not a bad pilot right there. Um, when defending, if you have. Oh, Major um, Vinder, or Vinder is next. Seven pilot skill, also has an EBT, so he could be a nine. Uh, when defending, if you have a weapons disabled token, Roll one additional defense dice. So this guy just embraces the tokens. He's like, you know what? I'm not, not going to be shooting at you, but if you're shooting at me, you're going to have more, more of a difficult time. And that means he's going to be rolling three defense dice. That's, that's pretty good. Especially for a ship that has seven hull and shields. I think that's, that's pretty considerable. I want to look at the dial here. Since that uh, one pilot has talks about stress, you need to see how to remove it. Slight one is white, straight one is green. 
We've got it too hard, which is white. Thank God it's not red. And then we have a green too slight, which is nice. And then a green too straight. White three hard. Yes. Yes. Next up, we have a three slight white. Oh, I was really hoping to be green. <laughs> white three straight. And then a red four straight, which I'll take. I like the ability to go fast, even if it stresses me out. Sometimes you need it. And has a lot of interesting cards in here, so I'm going to get into it. We're going to get Advanced Slam out of the way. Every ship to date that can slam comes with Advanced Slam. It's a modification. Two points after performing a slam action. If you did not overlap an obstacle or another ship, you may perform a free action on your action bar. Very nice. Alright, let's talk about the titles, because they are linchpins, pretty much, in this list. Uh, first off is the Assault Configuration. Your action bar gains two cannon icons. So it goes from none to two. And then you may perform... There's a space, note, so it's a different effect. You may perform attacks with cannon secondary weapons that cost two fewer squad points. Even while two or fewer squad points, even while you have a weapons disabled token. And that title has a cost of one. So I'm torn on this. I think it's good, obviously, but how good? I don't know. Because cheap cannons don't do damage. There's only one cheap cannon that does, and it's the one that gives stress. <sighs> so I don't know. It's like, do you want to do a tractor beam thing? I guess it's better than not having an attack, but it just, I don't know. And just a reminder, weapons disabled tokens clear at the end of the round, I believe, no matter what. So, um, yeah. Um, OS1 Arsenal Loadout is the next one. Two point cost says you're... Your upgrade bar gains the torpedo and missile upgrade icons. So that brings them up to two and two for those. You may perform attacks with torpedo and missile secondary weapons against ships you have locked, even while you have a weapons disabled token and two cost. I like this a lot better, personally, but I, I don't think either one's bad. I think they're both good cards. Because, uh, again, anything that allows you to attack when you're not supposed to be able to attack is great. Um, but I think it's a little better because those are attacks that you can do damage with. Like, a good amount of damage. Because, I mean, they have torpedoes that can roll up to five attack dice, given the scenario. And so you could be potentially doing five damage to someone versus one or none. So, if I had to rate the titles, I'd have to rate this one higher, just slightly. And, I mean, it is more expensive, so I think that's fair. Next is a small ship only, limited card. It's a cannon slot card, and it says, When attacking with a primary weapon or cannon secondary weapon, you may reroll one attack dice. It costs two. I think that's awesome. I think that's going to be a staple of this ship. Because when attacking with your primary or with a cannon, you have to reroll an attack dice. Just because you got it. No drawback except for the cost and the fact you're taking a cannon slot. Uh, so the only way to take it on this ship is if you take the cannon title. So that makes the cannon title a little better. Um, and remember, the cannon title gives you two cannon slots, so you still have one left over for a cannon. Next is a new cannon to the game. It brings another epic action into the small game, which I love. Jamming Beam it is three attack, range one to two, action, attack one ship. Oh, attack, attack one ship. I'm losing my mind. If this attack hits, assign the defender one jam token, then cancel all dice results. Cost one point. 
It's right on par of a tractor beam with the cost. A jamming beam, just so you know, is only removed when it removes a focus, evade, or blue target lock, if I remember right. This thing comes with a, a card on how it reads or how jam tokens work. But I believe you can also stack them. That's the point of contention. Everyone's saying, you know, you know, but how do you maneuver multiple ones? Does it just clear at the end of the round? But my understanding is it doesn't clear. This is the only thing it's not 100% clear. But uh, I believe it does not clear at the end of the round because I believe in the original game rules it states that only certain tokens clear at the end of the round. And they only clear when they are given the specification of when they clear. And the only time it says that jamming beam, beam clears is when it removes a token. Because the wording is jamming beam token clears when you, rem you know, when you have a blah blah blah, then you remove that token with it. So, you have to burn your action to get rid of jam token, which is awesome. <laughs> I, uh, I can see jam tokens being a, quite a nuisance. Like a new version of a stress list. Alright, then we got cruise missiles. Seen them before. I don't like them because it kind of gives away your maneuver. Uh, you want to go fast before you fire it because whatever speed you used, you get to add that to your attack. I'm not going to talk about it. Saturation Salvo, interesting card though. This is after you perform an attack with a torpedo or missile secondary weapon that does not hit. Each ship at range one of the defender with an agility value lower than the squad point cost of your torpedo or missile. The squad point cost of your torpedo or missile upgrade card must roll one attack dice and suffer any hits or critical damage rolled. And it's a EPT slot, surprisingly. One point. Interesting because, I mean, you still get some value when you miss. And when you have ordinance tokens or the ability to flip up your cards after you've used them, uh, you're going to be firing a lot. So, I think I don't think it's a bad card. I'm just wondering if it's a good card because there's so many other EPTs that assist ordnance like Deadeye and VI essentially assist you as well um, and those are also both one point so kinda surprised this one wasn't free but because you already have to pay a lot of points to get ordnance and the, the more you spend the more valuable it is so I don't know. I, I, I think it should have been free, but uh, it's my opinion. Uh, these cards come in all the, well not all of them, but uh, two of the ships in this wave. Uh, Camigula is the other one. So anyway, I bought four. The reason is, is because we look, if you look at the point cost of these ships, we're at 18 points for the base pilot. And if we use the cannon title, Bring it up by one, we're at 19. Then we use the linked battery. Two more points. It's going to bring us up to 21. And then we use Mangler Cannon. Four point cost, that brings us up to 25. Times that by four, that's at 100 points. So we could run four of these puppies. 25 points a pop. Four Mangler Cannon list. I think that's interesting. I got four of them, so I might as well try it, I guess. But uh, I know a friend of mine was talking about that list, and uh, I thought it's worth a shot now that I have four. Um, ironically, I was in that conversation saying that uh, I didn't think it was worth it to buy four of those ships just for one list. But now that I have four, I guess I'll try it. Because I accidentally bought four. It's a long story. Anyway, um, I would probably recommend buying, depending on how much uh, you want the cards, three. Three if you think you're going to use them, probably. Maybe four if you really want to run that Mangler list, but I feel like normally it'd be hard to fly four. Uh, I think I'd rather fly three that are like 
fully upgraded. So, probably with ordnance. Like I said, I really like the ordnance ones. Or the, uh, you know, torpedo missile options. So if you want to fly the those options, just buy three. Don't buy four. Anyway, all in all, I think it's a reasonable ship. And uh, I think it does have a place in the game. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned. I will be doing all the ships from Wave 12 and 13. And, uh, yeah. It's going to be a good choice.